So who, who here thinks that our educational system is broken? Anybody? Despite all of our efforts over the past 50 years, every single metric in education has gone in the wrong direction. Every single one. Literacy, down. Graduation, down. Obesity, up. Spending per student, up. The list goes on. It's clear that our education system is broken. So I've decided to dedicate my life to fixing it. <laughs> you see, many of our reforms have focused on reforming the system that was de designed back in the 1950s, rather than asking the more fundamental question, why do we educate? A hundred years ago, we were trying to build an informed population. Fifty years ago, we were differentiating students into blue-collar and white-collar careers. And today, half the time, we're trying to keep kids out of trouble. And the other half of the time, we're imprinting facts. And in just a few schools, we're actually teaching students how to learn. But I contend it's time to adopt a different lens through which we understand the purpose of education. Today, people and institutions are more connected. The rate of change and innovation is increasing, and the United States of America needs to play a different role in the world. To solve today's global challenges, students need to know more than quadratic equations or to have read Upton Sinclair. They need more than a high standardized test score. Fundamentally, in this world of constant change, they need to know how and when to apply their knowledge and skills. This means critical thinking, adaptability, creativity, collaboration. They need to understand the world and how it interacts, how their actions likely have an impact on someone halfway across the world and in their own community. So seven years ago, I decided to take a new approach. I rode a bike, a camel, a boat, a rickshaw in over 80 countries, in my early 20s, examining how children across the world were being educated. And when I was 23, I rode that same bike down to the Board of Education with an idea and then to build an entirely new public school in one of the most underserved parts of Chicago. The school would do four things. Focus on academic rigor, engaging parents, whole student education and international mindedness. Understandably, they thought I was crazy. I went to the Board of Ed three times over the course of three years. I promised that students in this school would not only outperform students on standardized tests, but it would be a model for teaching these skills, and it would help them succeed in the world. It was time to reimagine public education. For two years, the Board of Education said, you know, nine out of ten of those kids are already failing by the time they enter kindergarten. Eighty percent of those kids live below the poverty line, and their parents, you know, they have other things to worry about. They're not going to care. But the third year, they hesitantly agreed. And the Academy for Global Citizenship was born. <laughs> So fast forward three short years to today, and I want you to come and visit our school. So walk past the cracked asphalt parking lot and into our old barrel factory, past a wind turbine, a solar energy learning lab, past a garden, and in our doors where the walls hum with excitement. And this is what you might see. 80% of students reading at or above grade level. 90% of third graders excelling in math. 98 percent of parents showing up for parent-teacher conferences. 100 <laughs> percent of students are learning a second or third language. <laughs> and there's an award hanging on the wall from the White House, recognizing our leading innovation in health and wellness. Max is interrupting an administrative meeting, asking for solar panels for his train, and Carolina is using her imagination at recess to envision a future imperceptible to the adult eye. Not a day passes when I don't recall the people who didn't believe, those who didn't believe that these kids could learn. But you know, this is more than a story about Carolina and a story about Max. This is a story about you. Whenever I speak, I'm asked about what help I need. I often receive requests to create another school, but forget it. Forget creating one more school. That is not the answer. That is not the solution. 
Because in order to impact the 405,000 children in the Chicago public education system, or the 80.5 million children in public schools across the nation, we must focus on systemic change. What we've built is proof that thinking differently about a system of education that hasn't materially progressed for 50 years can yield disproportionately positive outcomes. We don't spend more money than other public schools, yet we see vastly better results across any measure. And there are other schools across this nation who are innovating in education, and they are achieving the same results. So, we are building a laboratory to focus on evaluating, extracting, and refining education innovations from both our school and other schools across the nation. In essence. I want to open source what works in education, ranging from sustainable building technologies to sustainable teaching technologies. But we need your help. So here's my invitation to you. First, I invite you to sit down with me this week and figure out how you can get involved in this institute, in this lab. We're looking for everybody: scientists, technologists, innovators, communicators, you name it. Second, come see what reimagining education can look like. What happens when we think differently about what is possible in education? And third, I want all of us to promise that next year here at TED, using the power of the TED community, we are going to construct a movement that's going to take the lab's innovations and scale them across the United States of America. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's what I mean by scale. Creating a simple systemic mindset shift that can spread. This is not about our next generation. This is about Carolina and the 80.5 million children sitting in classrooms across America right now. This is about the children who will lead the world sooner than you can ever imagine. Thank you.